Good morning. So, uh, what I would try to say is uh, some ideas that we got uh, from uh, recent research. We spent uh, already a few years uh, trying to model nanomaterial toxicity. And uh, first thing we did, we, we tried to go on with a very straightforward kind of brute force approach. But very soon we realized that it's not a good idea. We, we simply try to uh, imagine a cell membrane uh, through in nanoparticles and then try to see what happens to the membrane when they expose to nanoparticles. Uh, but the problem with that approach is, is that, of course, even if it's experimentally supported, at, at that point we saw a lot of publications showing that nanoparticles put on top of the nanocells can destroy the membranes and kill the cells. And so we see multiple necrosis that this is not what happens uh, in, in reality. And uh, one representative uh, things on, on, on this is taken from uh, uh, Ken Dawson's uh, group uh, publications. And, and Ken is also based in uh, UCD and <coughs> leading that research for really quite some years. The understanding uh, that a lot of things happen uh, between the uh, particles, uh, nanoparticles getting into the organism and uh, they producing some negative effects. And uh, what, what's shown here in, the, in this picture is the nanoparticle enveloped in uh, biomolecules, in particular proteins, that they could be uh, proteins in, in blood, uh, plasma or could be uh, proteins taken in lung lining fluids and, or uh, in, in other places. But the reality is that what the cells will see and where will uh, these nanoparticles go after that will be determined by the initial interactions at, at the interface. So therefore, we come to a new idea. We, we uh, have to speak about the negative effects in terms of nanoparticle identity. And what is that identity is determined by the whole uh, history of the interaction, starting from the nanoparticle production, uh, processing, uh, distribution in the environment, then initial contacts, and then systemic uh, distribution. So it, it's a uh, long chain of uh, events that leads to some um, particular, uh, probably adverse outcome. So in this picture, you see some consecutive uh, things. First, if you imagine even inhaling a bare nanoparticle, first it will be enveloped already in the lung, in the lung lining fluid will be enveloped by the stuff that is already in there, with lipids, proteins, uh, sugars, or whatever is in the, in the uh, membrane. Then, using that stuff, it will interact with the uh, receptors will they interact with the uh, cells in there who use it uh, to uh, penetrate uh, the barriers and that uh, get into blood. And then at that stage it can already make some damage, but the uh, probably the most damaging effects are more remote. Because uh, due to this uh, stuff absorbed on uh, nanoparticles, it will be able to activate various uh, natural uh, machinery in our organism to uh, get along. So, if we start with, with the just uh, chemistry of a nanomaterial, so where we are, can we, uh, what, what can we understand uh, at this point? We've realized uh, through our uh, research in this field that uh, we have very limited capacity to uh, model uh, the hazardous effects directly. And they, they're very limited and they're very local. Nanoparticles indeed can destroy the membrane, but only if they are, uh, uh, get to the membrane in, in their uh, bare state with a highly active and reactive uh, surface state, which is highly unlikely, as we understand now. 
They can damage some proteins, but the number of proteins damaged is not that huge to intoxicate the, the whole organism. So, uh, major effects probably will happen at, at a different level. They might happen, as Barry mentioned, at the systemic level. They can perturb certain pathways and interfere with the uh, natural things going on in, in the organism, and therefore uh, produce some remote effects which are not directly related uh, to the uh, nanoparticle or original identity. But then uh, we need to know what, what happens actually at the point of contact. And at that point we realize that by nano interface is very poorly understood. So there are different communities in modeling, some community which is doing from the very early stage of a molecular simulation, doing simulations of and other particles consisting of several atoms and maybe hundreds, hundreds of atoms doing molecular uh, simulations. But in those simulations of inorganic materials, no organics is present. So uh, those people and those uh, methods, like force fields, they are not adapted to uh, modeling proteins. At the, at the same time, the protein modeling community is even bigger, so we have already Nobel Prizes awarded for protein uh, simulations. Uh, but they uh, cannot really handle inorganic materials. And that, that interface, uh, actually combining the properties of the two, is a, a difficult thing. So we need more work to build predictive models to, to say what actually will happen at the interface and uh, uh, produce certain things. And uh, based on this, we should be able to pr uh, produce some new predictors, some relevant description of uh, binary interaction that is able to produce a negative effect. Other things wh which I haven't uh, mentioned so far are listed uh, down here. So we need also more work to uh, uh, evaluate real dosage. Uh, because what happens in the experiment, in many in vitro experiments, we know that uh, uh, cells are overexposed. Those kind of concentrations that kill the cells in the uh, in vitro assays can never happen in reality and cannot be observed. So we need a tool to calculate uh, the, the actual amounts of nanomaterials penetrating uh, certain organs and, and tissues. And therefore, uh, because of this, poor understanding. We, we can state now that many uh, of the observed in vitro toxicity endpoints were uh, used that. They're not really relevant for evaluating the really serious effects like, like cancer, fibrosis, or some other uh, things that are systemic and, and remote. So here's one of the generic picture of what uh, Barry was saying as well. Uh, idea of the AP. Uh, and uh, th this is related now to mechanistic understanding of toxicity, uh, mechanism of action. And we see uh, different levels uh, in this picture. So the larger scale level, at the population level or organism level, they are there. But what we're interested in is over here. And you see the, these things, nanoparticle properties and the uh, resulting adverse effects are related over several scales, lengths and time scales. And I, actually what we tried to do initially was to relate nanomaterial properties with the immediate toxicity, say with that level or with that level. And uh, in most cases that, that was a, a failure. Although we have found some effects but not, not, they're not really that serious and important. What is important is the relation between this and that. And the key things are happening at this scale, at the scale of binary interactions, where the nanoparticle triggers the, the pathway. And at this point, we also need to understand that uh, all the stuff starting from, from the second box, that one, it could be automatic. It's not immediately related to nanoparticle itself. Once the pathway is triggered, then it will go on just by itself. So nanomaterial uh, properties are not really relevant for that. And 
Then we, we need to understand the key events. Uh, Barry also uh, mentioned the molecular initiating events, or key events, and they happen uh, at this scale. So this is where they introduced, and uh, this is what the uh, this knowledge-based approach must be based on. We, we, we need to cover uh, the first uh, two boxes in, in, in here. So the idea of the new approach that we're trying to develop now uh, is just like this. It's a much simplified thing. So we, we try to focus uh, on, on the initial events, and then we, that can be done both by modeling, by trying to understand by an interface, what happens to biomolecules, what kind of biomolecules are affected uh, by nanomaterials, but also, but also by in vitro experiments, in vitro experiments of different type. We need to see what is the content of the nanoparticle protein corona, what molecules are affected by the initial contacts, in what way they, they are affected. So we need to analyze the corona using the same uh, proteomics stuff. We need to track nanoparticles inside uh, the tissues to see where they get in, in with what molecules they uh, associate it. And uh, I believe that this is the uh, major task for, for the nearest future. So understanding of bio interactions is needed to address those molecular initiating events and to bind the nanomaterial properties to the pathway. So uh, this level of uh, complexity is increasing as we already heard. So, I, I can state here that uh, knowing just the standard descriptors is not sufficient. Even uh, if we know the nanoparticle chemistry, shape, size, that is not enough to predict the toxicity. And that we saw uh, some months ago, some of you have been there at Comp Nanotox meeting, where the results of first modeling by Moderna were reported. The problem is that you don't see much correlation between those basic descriptors and, and the toxicity uh, outcomes. And the reason is that we uh, I, actually what all, all those things are missing the, the part that happens at the point of contact at the binary interface. And we need new descriptors to really get meaningful uh, correlations and to do a statistical analysis. So, uh, we, we have to calculate the relevant uh, descriptors. So the next steps, of what, what we propose here, should be in, in modeling and, and uh, new characterization uh, of nanomaterials to, to calculate more relevant things. Not, not just chemistry, but calculate the electronic structures, bang up, ionization potential, dissolution rate, hydration energy, surface energy, protein or lipid binding affinity, and, and so on. So th these are complex and advanced descriptors, but they can be uh, calculated. It, it's not easy. We, we need to build models for uh, careful and quantitative uh, modeling of bi interface, where the inorganic and organic materials come in contact. And then we need to, using those new descriptors, to reanalyze uh, the existing data and believe uh, I believe we'll be able to extract new information from that. So uh, our approach is as follows and the, the project one just ended membrane nanopart and end of uh, 2015 we, we are starting a new one smart nanotox which is uh, going uh, along uh, those lines and the idea uh, we're trying to explore. This is just outlined here in terms of modeling. We, we, we start from uh, ab initio uh, models or atomistic models of uh, by an interface. So you see there a picture of titanium dioxide in contact with, with the peptide, where at the atomistic level the interaction is uh, parametrized. Then we extract information from that to build a more coarse grain model and to look at the whole protein absorption on the surface of a nanoparticle. Then we do further coat graining to model nanoparticle protein corona and to see all the molecules 
that will be affected by contact with the nanoparticle and we'll uh, try to predict in what way they are affected. Probably misfolded protein, probably uh, taken on receptor that, uh, uh, the ligand that will drive this particle through the cell membrane using the uh, uh, cell machinery. And then using the uh, model lipid uh, nanoparticle and, and the uh, protein We'll, we'll try to understand the, the systemic transport and the, even local damages in the area. And uh, uh, using these models, we can also study uh, uh, this phenomena at the time result level. We, we'll see in the dynamics how the corona evolves and what other molecules can be affected later on while the particle is transported through the organism. So uh, here on, on this slide, you see a uh, picture of the, uh, our, uh, our new project, Smart Nanotox. The approach we're trying to take on to, to, to combine these two things, the idea of a pathway. And the, the pathway we will try to extract from in vivo experiments, inhalation and installation experiment to, to analyze what, what kind of pathways are. Uh, initiated, uh, triggered, or perturbed by uh, nanoparticles. Then we'll, we'll try to do in vitro experiment to understand what happens at the point of contact. And then we'll, we'll try to combine that with the results of modeling. We'll try to model by an interface of the selected uh, nanomaterials with the relevant biomolecules uh, to see how in, in what way they can really trigger those, uh, those pathways. So those pathways will then be uh, validated and we have several important outcomes. Pathways uh, as such, toxicity or adverse outcome pathways, molecular initiating events or key events for those pathways. And then we'll try to build that database of interactions, nanobio interactions yeah. for uh, relevant materials and build a framework for uh, scanning, uh, cost-effective scanning of any new materials coming into the market for uh, ability to trigger those particular pathways. And, um, and here I, I just want to say uh, that th this research is just starting and I am really hopeful to get in contact with the, all of you uh, to progress on this way. So I hope it will be successful. <laughs>